Hi, I'm Jennifer Kent, VP of Research with Parks Associates, and I'm joined today by Genevieve Grenier, who's the VP Chief of Strategy and Business Performance with Flow Ad Energy. Hi, Genevieve. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us today. Hi, so pleased to be there. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. Why don't we start off today by hearing a little bit about Flow and uh, what Flow offers and how you fit into the larger smart energy ecosystem? Yeah. So we, um, the, the company, it's, it's funny actually, because we've been like such veteran in the space. We've been around for the last 10 years. And when we're looking at all the timeline and things and how things are accelerating in the last years, um, you know, it's, we've come a long way. So we have, we're covering all segments. So whether public fleets, workplace, residential, uh, our focus is uptime and reliability with a strong, um, a strong element around energy management and making sure that whatever the network we're scaling, it's smart network and smart solution. Wonderful. Well, so we are, of course, coming out of a, a year, more than a year, uh, of really unique circumstances where consumers, uh, commercial energy consumption and usage has changed quite a bit. Uh, consumers' patterns of using vehicles and transportation generally has has changed. Um, sitting in the EV and smart charging market, you're at a really unique position in the market to see a lot of those changes. Can you tell us a little bit about what this past year, 18 months has looked like from, from your perspective at Flow? Yes, so what we've seen in um, charging patterns, especially on the public side or even like at residential front because all our stations are connected. So we have like the real time data all the time. Uh, we, we've seen like a slowdown uh, in how people move and when they move. So, you know, out of a sudden, uh, in LA, for example, uh, we've seen peak uh, around 1 and 2 p.m., uh, like moving and shifting away from the initial peak that was like around 5 and 6. So probably people doing errands and stuff like that. So what we're seeing is like for sure a slowdown in the last um, almost a year now. Um, but what we're also looking is the fundamental of that industry uh, are not changing. And this is what we were the most scared uh, back in March, where we were like, OK, you know, will EV uh, go through that very big stress test? Um, and we're looking at prices of oil at the same time. So and then end of July, what we realize is all the models that were sold that were internal combustion engine were in decline where EVs were growing um, more in Europe than in North America, but, you know, still going very strong in North America. So, you know, we now are looking with the latest announcement um, a growing desire to accelerate that industry and you know consum consumer uh, response uh, is there and uh, you know the demand like it's it's like we're at a point where right now we need to make sure that we're fulfilling the demand that is coming yeah that's incredible i think you use the term you know resilient that the uh, ev market is quite resilient and and uh, maybe earlier in the year, weren't sure how the market trends are going to develop, but but given that that demand is there, we know that uh, growing use and adoption of EVs uh, means a lot more demand on the uh, infrastructure on the grid. Uh, one of the key ways that uh, electric vehicles um, cross over into the smart home sector, which we are talking about a lot in the smart energy summit communities, is in charging, of course, whether it's a single family home and you're charging at the home or you're charging as part of an MDU complex. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how that uh, part of the market is, is evolving um, and, and what we can expect over the next year or two? Yeah, so, you know, as we know, 80% of the charging happens at home. Uh, and I'll talk about single family home because when it comes to multi uh, unit residential, it's much more complex to deploy infrastructure. 
So what we're seeing right now in the trends um, is that the EV penetration is greater in areas where people actually have a parking, a private parking. And mm -hmm. in downtown cities uh, where there's, uh, you know, dense urban areas and people can have to park on the curbside, this is where EV penetration is the lowest. But what we are looking at um, is in some pockets, and I, I live in a, a neighborhood where fortunately or unfortunately for the utility, we have 10% penetration right now of all vehicles being electric. And mm -hmm. prior to the pandemic, what was happening is everyone was going back from home and charging at the same time at 6 p.m. Uh, and it has like tremendous impact on the grid. So what we're looking at is how uh, utilities and energy partner will respond also to that increase of demand. Uh, and we want to make sure that the grid can take it. And this is where aggregated um, solution like demand response will play a key role in how that infrastructure will roll out. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's something that we'll be talking about with um, many of the speakers at, at, throughout the Smart Energy Summit sessions uh, from the utilities and energy providers perspective, use, use of demand response programs, the variety of connected devices in the home, EVs being one of them and the charging infrastructure being one of them uh, and managing that load. And it's interesting to think about how um, long-term perhaps change in work and commuting patterns uh, may impact that, especially um, if you have the uh, time of charging spread out, if, if not as many people are doing the traditional commute, right? And uh, more people are, are at home and whether or not um, that changes trends. And so the ability to have that aggregated view and be able to, to shift your management of, of the load um, quickly and, and flexibly flexibly, right, uh, to adapt to those patterns might be even more important. Yeah. And, you know, I think we'll see also in the in variation of what uh, mobility used to be. Uh, so we'll see new patterns emerging. And I think all the energy players right now, they're looking at you know, we're about like two, three percent of penetration of EVs right now. But if you push down the line and you're looking at, you know, the next five, 10 years, um, they really need to plan accordingly and they need to do it in a matter that they're not also stressing their grid at nighttime where they can lower the transformers lifespan. So mm -hmm. it's a very interesting kind of equilibrium. And right now there's a lot of pilot that we are participating in. And, you know, the widespread of those pilots are still not there, but we're seeing some project uh, having more traction and where utilities want to be extremely proactive. Well, Genevieve, thank you so much for your insights and, and telling us more about flow and what you're seeing in the market right now. Uh, we appreciate adding your voice uh, to the many voices in the Smart Energy Summit community throughout this year and, and the many uh, discussions that we have. So thanks very much for being here for your time. Thank you for inviting me.